So, so yeah, uh, with that, let me first uh, uh, go to the portion of the lecture that I don't want to repeat. <laughs> so I think I did it in the introduction to simple harmonic oscillator, yeah, equations of motion, equation of motion. So this is where I will have uh, gone through this whole thing. And um, button as far as writing down. This equation of motion. Um, so we won't go through that whole introduction again <laughs> and save us uh, uh, how many minutes of time? 15 minutes of time. So, um, so yeah, th this is the equation of motion for simple harmonic oscillator. And in the lecture, I went over how it's uh, uh, difficult <laughs> at our level of math, difficult to solve something like this by hand. It's a second order ordinary differential equation and um, and uh, nothing you have learned in either math 3a or math 3b will allow you to solve this directly if this had been a first order would uh, yeah it's, there's a, a, a square missing there but I think I put it back later in the lecture <laughs> if uh, there if it had been a first order differential equation, we could have do, uh, solved for it by using separation of variables. It's math, <laughs> it's a second order. And in math 3F, you will learn methods to uh, solve it. And, um, but math 3F, it's, it's not even co-requisite for this class. So we need to find some way to do it. And there is a way to do it by hand that's called guess and check. You've seen me do that in lecture, and you can do it that way. But if that's leaving you with, um, um, un if that's leaving you unsatisfied, um, you are the person uh, this lecture is for. So we are going to use computer tool to help us access the level of math that we don't know how to do by hand yet. So this is something called Jupyter. It runs with the Sage Math, and uh, I've done all for recording. Uh, how to how I got all this to run work on my own computer. Now on your own computer, you could use sagecell.sagemethod.org. Uh, There's an interface there that you could use almost like a Jupyter notebook, the uh, downside being this is fully interactive. I'll do line by line here. Um, um, it's, uh, it's not gonna be that way. <laughs> um, so, so let me start by defining the variables I'm going to use. I need to define variables x, um, t, and I guess uh, I'll work with the mass on a spring system. So there will be spring constant, there will be mass, and I think that's it. And um, there's a shortcut that I'll be using. Let me just uh, show you what that shortcut is. Under cell, you see this shortcut. There are three different ways of entering enter. It either runs the cell and then runs the cell and does something else. Most of the time, I will want to run this input and then insert a new line for me to uh, start doing new stuff. So I'll be doing alt enter most of the time. Uh, later on, I might be doing these two other stuff depending on what I want to do. You can kind of watch what happens and <laughs> based on what happens, guess what I entered. Now here, um, I don't um, I don't fully remember uh, what syntax I should uh, use to um, to use this tool to solve this ordinary differential equation. Uh, uh, let me first, uh, yeah, yeah, even writing down the equations uh, with the ODE, so sometimes you have to know the programming syntax. Uh, this uh, has a documentation features. There's a built-in documentation that you can use even in Sage Excel uh, if you do help. And the function that you are going to use, I guess you have to know that somehow. If you don't even know that, uh, you can Google search something like uh, solving ODE with the Sage Math, and you know something will come up. Like you can do that. <laughs> but I'm gonna use this. Let me do Control Enter, and it shows this help documentation. So I'm looking at it. Okay, that's a function solving differential. Um, uh, equations and uh, what I find the most useful most of the time is examples like this because they show you kind of how to get started. So yeah, I think uh, okay. So I need to define 
um, oh, so I think I want to say my x is a variable, a function of time. So I want to really do uh, x is equal to function of x uh, of time. And then I think the rest I can remember, or I will just uh, bring it up again <laughs> next time. So I define the x. It's a uh, function of time. Um, and and uh, let me see if there's an alternate help function here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to do this. Uh, I mean, but you know, you could uh, explore this on your own if uh, you set this up, um, like uh, something like SimPy could be one where you find the stuff. I'm just going to do the stuff that I know. Um, so there's my L. Um, so what I mainly wanted to know was, um, so I guess uh, what I actually need is I need to write down my differential equation. So um, here I need to, so this is how you express a derivative. So I need to say uh, derivative of x with respect to t. And I think I remember this syntax. If I put two here, that's going to say that um, it's a second order derivative. That's equal to uh, minus k over n times, uh, not t, but x as a function of time. And uh, I want to store this into a variable called equation. Because that's my differential equation. Um, good. And, uh, <laughs> okay, good. That's my equation. I'm just double checking that I've done things right. Um, so now what I need to do is use the differential um, equation solver function to solve it. Uh, it takes these parameters. DE is the differential equation. Uh, D bar is the dependent variable. Here it would be my x. X is the variable that's dependent on t. And ICS is the initial conditions. And then I'll go as far as I bar, the independent variable time. So. Um, so I'm going to have to reuse this cell. So I'll say uh, solution is this solve my differential equation, which is equation. Dif uh, dependent variable is x. And for my initial condition, let me say none for now, and I can just change it later. Independent variable is t. So when I do that, oh, oh and it takes a little bit of time. Oh, one time error. What is it complaining about? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it asks these questions because um, uh, computer algebra systems tend to assume everything is super, uh, super general. So it's uh, probably assuming my k and m are actually co potentially complex numbers. So, um, you know, I was assuming this is the case, and uh, all right, yeah, I'm going to assume that. K times M is greater than zero, um, so that K times M will be positive. Uh, so let me just uh, put that up here. Assume that. I think the rest will be fine. Yeah, it's solved. Let me just look at the solution here. Um, yeah, so it's... Uh, come up with this solution and you see how it has two um, coefficients underscore underscores what proceeds all the uh, integration constants or coefficients uh, so this is a parameter that's uh, not determined by the differential equation so when you look at the form of this equation you can see that it has to determine some of the parameters that would be determined by the equation so when you have something like, um, um, so when you think of a typical solution to an oscillatory thing, you know, A times cosine of omega t plus V, then this parameter omega, that's actually determined by the differential equation. Because the only way the solution can be, this type of solution can be a solution, is if this coefficient is equal to omega squared. So um, that's why this, uh, in the position that corresponds to omega, the square root of k divided by square root of m, uh, so that uh, ome this omega squared is equal to k over m. 
So, um, so it's done that. And there are, with the second order differential equations, you are going to, or you should have two parameters that are not completely fixed by the differential equation itself. You need to uh, specify something called the boundary conditions, or in this case, the initial conditions. Yeah, initial or boundary conditions. I swear I was reading that. Um, to, in order to determine this. So uh, you can, so let me try doing this this way. So instead of uh, solving the, oh, I should have done this in separate cells. Um, instead of um, solving the solution uh, with a, no specified initial condition. Let me specify some initial conditions. So there's a syntax for initial conditions, um, which is described somewhere down here. It is super unintuitive. So you do want to kind of read the documentation to know. Um, There should be some example using initial conditions. Uh, initial conditions are then interpreted as uh, here, my initial independent variable value, and then this order of things. So with a higher order uh, differential equations, you need to specify these uh, more of the higher order things. So so yeah, um, if I say my, in, wonder what it will do if I say my initial conditions are t equals zero, so time uh, conditions at time equals zero, and let's say it's at um, initial position of some amplitude of it. So I need to so I need to insert one cell below. Um, so let's say I need a parameter a to uh, specify amplitude. Um, so initial position is A, and if I stop here, I haven't fully specified the initial conditions. Let me see what Sage method does if I just to run with this. Uh, yeah, it's gonna complain because I started the specifying initial condition and I didn't finish specifying all the required initial conditions. <laughs> so let me finish specifying that. I guess it's uh, all or nothing. So um, I want to, so when you look at the documentation here for um, format of the initial condition, the first uh, or the second entry was the, the dependent variable itself. I set it at the distance of the amplitude and the next two argument should be the first two derivative. Um, so in our context, that would be the velocity. So uh, I think the way I had it in my head, I wanted the velocity of the thing to be zero. So I'm imagining a string, a spring that's been stretched out, starts out from rest, and it's uh, moving up. Yeah. So I want initial velocity to be zero. Let me specify that. And all this error is just the expression of the physical reality that if I didn't express this uh, velocity, initial velocity of the mass on a spring, then I have incompletely specified the thing. And if you're solving this by hand, maybe you would have had a way to handle it, but uh, computer algebra system, it's, you know, it's a computer uh, programming language. They, uh, they are kind of dumb in a way. They <laughs> want you to stick to a particular way. So this solution would correspond to where phi is equal to zero. Uh, it's a solution where the uh, x at time equals zero is at the amplitude and, um, and the velocity is zero. And using this exact setup, you can actually, um, how do you do that? You say, no, um, I don't know how to enter that. Because if you just say, okay, okay. Uh, I press the meta B and meta key is as escape key. <laughs> okay, um, so, so, so if I wanted a different kind of solution where the, in the initial stage, the Masses at the um, masses at the 
equilibrium position but oh let me see if i can get the uh, trivial solution so at initial time mass is at the equilibrium position with zero velocity then i think i should get the trivial solution let's see what we have yeah i get the trivial solution x is equal to zero for all time so you can have mass set uh, equilibrium position at initial time and have a non-trivial solution by having some um, by having some non-zero velocity. So let me just uh, specify some initial um, speed with the letter initial speed of v naught. So by specifying initial speed v naught, I now get an answer that um, it has some complex dependence. <laughs> the part that I think is the easiest for us to uh, associate with is this. It goes as a sign of time. So you can imagine if this phi was 90 degrees or something along that line, then this would be uh, going as a sign of omega t instead of cosine of omega t. And you can also do uh, stuff like uh, what if initially instead of moving up, it's initially moving down? Then the solution you get, yeah, you get with a minus sign. Because um, so even though at time equals zero, these two will have the same value, zero, because t will be zero. But uh, they differ in, in what direction the mass starts out moving. So so this is all fun. Now if this is where you stop, then other than saving a little bit of time or, or, and maybe gaining a little bit of rigor or at least a sense of rigor, <laughs> um, then the method you used in the lecture, um, I'm just doing the exact same thing that I already did in lecture. Like this is not anything new. Uh, what I will tell you is new and helpful with this tool is it allows you to solve for differential equations that's really difficult to solve. So let me, um, I think your textbook at least gives you the differential equation. So let me go to the section and show you what I'm talking about. When you go to the um, textbook section on simple harmonic oscillators, um, let's see, do they have, I think they, uh, there's a section on damped oscillators. So the kind of the simple harmonic oscillator we've been dealing with here, it's not, the most realistic of simple harmonic oscillators because any mass on a spring or a pendulum, they will all eventually um, they will eventually um, decay. They they will stop at some point, and they stop because of the damping. And this damping has to be modeled in your equations somehow. If it's not modeled, then and, you know, the solutions you get doesn't reflect a realistic scenario. That's the friction that, you know, a lot of you like to bring up at the beginning of the semester. And I, and I trained you away from bringing up friction as an answer to everything. Now we are bringing it back. We do the mathematical methods of uh, outsourcing it to a computer algebra system. Uh, you can actually handle those situations uh, in rigorous detail. So... This describes all that. I don't really want to go through it. Okay. All I really want is, and you know, your textbook just gives you the answer because it's too complicated to work out. So, um, so let's uh, just uh, explore this setup with help of this computer algebra system. So I need to modify my equation. So I'm just gonna copy that, and I'm pressing Escape with A to insert a cell above. That's what this is. Um, in on max, a uh, different keys might work as a meta key. Maybe the option key will do that. Uh, it, this is one of those things that if you are familiar with the Linux, <laughs> that's the language that Sage method speaks. So, um, so my differential equation instead of this, let me just copy this exactly. So it looks like I need to um, define a new variable b that uh, my new equation uses. And I need to say my equation is uh, mass times second derivative plus b times the first derivative plus k times x is equal to zero. Uh, uh, let me just give this a new name, the damped equation. Uh, 
Okay, um, that looks like what I meant to type in. And uh, let's see if we can just uh, do the thing that we were doing before. So we were uh, using this to solve this differential equation before. Let's see if we'll just do that. Um, <laughs> so I have equation D. Uh, X is still my dependent variable. This is still the initial condition I want. It, t is still my independent variable. Let me uh, just give it a different symbol so that I don't keep overriding the stuff from before. And I don't know, okay, it's complaining. Um, ah, here it is. Uh, computation failed. Yeah, you. Okay, it looks like they want me to specify additional assumptions. Um, so. Oh, yeah. And I think this uh, your textbook does go into that. This is uh, actually a pretty critical condition. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, in fact, uh, it, it describes, so this uh, corresponds to parameters that are under here. And depending on whether this is positive, zero, or negative, you have three different types of damping. Your textbook should be describing that in terms of under damped critically damped and over damped situations. Let me start out with under damped. That's the easiest one. For the under damped condition, I believe I want this to be positive. So the, the damping term B is kind of small. So let me go back and put in a parameter, a line for assumption. So assume, um, I should have copied that. Assume this is greater than zero. That is exactly what I want to assume. And I don't think this conflicts with assumptions I have entered so far, so it won't complain. So this should give me an under them to solution. Now, um, <laughs> it, should, it looks super complicated. Like, I don't want to deal with this. Uh, it's a, it looks as complicated as, as the solution that your textbook gave you because uh, because that's what it is. Um, in fact, it probably is even more complicated because the Sage method opted to put this in the format of cosine plus sine instead of a single trig function plus phi there. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to um, substitute in some numerical values. So I can imagine substituting in, okay, A is equal to 1, initial amplitude 1, some arbitrary value. Um, and K equal to 1, I'm using natural units. I'm letting my spring constant <laughs> determine what my units are. Let's see what else is left. Uh, so I have B and then, oh, I think I can set M equal to one as well. Um, yeah, so with all that, I think the only parameters left are B and T. So I need to choose my value of B so that this assumption holds. Um, K was one, M was one. So my B could be one. Um, so let me set B equal to one. So that gives this function where basically everything is numerical except for T. So this is now something I can plot uh, with a plotting function. Let me plot it with, oh, I don't know if I remember how to, <laughs> I don't remember the syntax for plot. <laughs> let me just do this <laughs> so that I can look down. Plot, uh, yeah, it's a, a function used in for many different circumstances. I think I want examples. Plot, uh, plot. I don't know if we don't recognize T. Okay, I can use that syntax. Okay, so let me go with the time from. Um, so I'm plotting with the time. Uh, wait, that's the substitution. Time from zero to some arbitrary value. So I will put 10 for now as a, some reasonable value. Now, I don't mean 10 seconds. It's 10 in this uh, natural unit system that's been determined by these two um, values. I, I don't know what that is. Could be, it's definitely not seconds. So, okay, um, I get that, which, you know, it's an oscillation, but it looks uh, like it's uh, damping up pretty quickly. Or let me just, um, 
pull out, out to a bit of a longer time. Yeah, still damping out a little bit quickly. So if you want to look at um, oscillation that's really under damped, I can reduce my damping coefficient by a factor of 10. So I get that. Um, <laughs> and I can plot it to a longer time. And this is a kind of what you expect uh, realistic oscillation to behave. Kind of an oscillation that's uh, dying down in a fashion that kind of reminds you of an exponential decay. That's exactly what it is. Uh, let me do a couple more examples kind of quickly. Now, so I can, you know, make this parameter as small as I want, and it'll just, uh, you know, make the damping just to go slower and slower. Uh, at some point, I'm not plotting this reasonably. Um, now, if you are wanting to make it large, um, you can make it larger to a point, but, um, yeah. So the value I put in is place where it's just below critical damping, because looking at this assumption, B equals two will be critically damped. And if I try to plot out B equals two, yeah, it will complain because uh, yeah, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's contrary to the assumption that we made in solving the differential equation. So for the, so let me just end this with here, a nice looking uh, uh, under damped situation. And we'll just uh, redo. Uh, we got to um, uh, re-enter some kind of an assumption. And um, I believe if I simply say this, it will complain because this conflicts with the previous assumption. And I thought there was a way to clear previous assumptions. Let me see. Um, assume, ah, forget. Okay, so I need to, oh, I need to forget. And I need to re-enter one of those previous assumptions that k times them is positive, or maybe I don't need that. Let me try this. Uh, just to, um, so forget, we'll just forget all the assumptions I've entered so far. And when I enter this, okay, it's fine. All right, um, let me copy over the remainder. So I, it, it's still the exact same equation. I don't have to change a thing here. Um, let's make sure it solves. Does it not so? Ah, is B zero or non-zero? Okay. Uh, any other or something? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. I gotta make it assume uh, assume uh, B is uh, greater than zero. Uh, it's even positive. Uh, uh, yeah. If I simply say it's not zero, they might assume it's complex or whatever. It's positive number, yeah. Okay, so this is what you get as a critically damped case. Let me try plotting this on the same time scale to see, uh, help to help me compare critically damped case with um, uh, with an over damped case. So I assume the B is greater than zero. So I can use the values of B. Um, so this would be actually, B has to be two. If B is any other value then uh, then I'm effectively changing my k and m because they have been kind of written out of the equation. So my b has to be 2. I don't really have any other choice. Okay, so this is the critically damped case. Let's look at over damped case. Um, so to get over damped case, what I have to do is forget the previous uh, assumptions. And... Um, so this would be less than zero. Let me see if that will be enough. If it's not enough, then um, then I will do something with the B like with the before. So same differential equation. Don't have to change a thing, probably. And I'm gonna put in the same values of K and M. And now the value of B will be different. If it's a two, then I'm sure uh, it'll <laughs> something will go wrong. So I'll just make it two point one to make it slightly over um, So this is the over case. And I was always told that um, maybe 2.1 doesn't give uh, enough of a difference. Let me make B3. This is a kind of a factory that was taught to me when I was um, learning physics, that if you have something that's oscillating like a, like a door it, uh, on a spring that's gonna swing back and forth, and you want it to come to rest the quickest, 
then you definitely don't want to under damp it because then it's going to swing back and forth a lot or a few times. And what I was told was that you don't want to over damp it either because if you over damp it, it'll take a long time to come to equilibrium. What you are shooting for is the critical damping where the door comes, the swing beam comes to stop in the quickest amount of time without swinging back and forth. So, uh, so this is what it's demonstrating and, you know, working through all this, um, that's the kind of thing that uh, something like computer algebra system, like a sage math Excel thing. Your textbook gives some illustration of that and you know, works on some of the cases, but like it, you know, it's not interactive, <laughs> you can't explore it. So th there's a way I've been working through this. So uh, this kind of a uh, notebook, this is uh, done in the style of, uh, I, I imagine, uh, Mathematica notebook, um, or I I've definitely done it in the style of Mathematica notebook, where basically everything from start to finish is kind of um, what you want to run in order to, um, in the sequential order to demonstrate the thing that you want to demonstrate. So um, if I want you, if this notebook to make sense, I would put in some kind of um, um, comment or annotations like, oh, I wonder, is there a cell I can, uh, so Mathematica has, maybe I did notebook metadata, I don't know. So uh, within Mathematica, there are cells that are meant for computation and ones that are, yeah, Markdown is probably it. So if I want to, Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, if I want to make this uh, marker down cell, wait, what was that? No, oh, that's just the M, yeah. So define, um, define variables we are going to use. And if I try to run it, it shouldn't run. Because, yeah, or when I run it, it'll just, uh, you know, make it display. Uh, Markdown is a, like HTML, it's a display language. Um, so, uh, first, uh, working at the simple harmonic oscillator without damping. Oh, um, <laughs> can I edit it? I don't know if I can. Yeah, I can edit it. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I haven't, um, <laughs> I'm new to this. Um, and then let me just put in a marker here. Um, see. Yeah, this is where. Um, see. Here. To look at some balance with the damping. Um, and this would be the under damped case. First, uh, um, under damped case. Uh, critically damped case. And Final of damped case. And uh, it's a way of you can, like him not, uh, in, I can imagine like in upper division, you do your homework this way, so that you don't have to do tedious algebra. Uh, uh, close that note. Yeah. Um, tedious algebra uh, uh, by hand. And uh, when I have that saved this way, I'm pretty sure I should be able to go back to this. And so when I open it at start, um, it shouldn't have anything run. So like if I try to do something like this, it'll complain. Like I don't need, the, I don't have the stuff I need, but I can just run everything from start to end. And the way I organized it, they should just work. Um, and I'm pretty sure you don't have to do it like one by one like this should be able to just, uh, there should be a button press to press that says run everything in the notebook. Um, did I not save? Yeah, I didn't save, uh, sorry, there are stuff here that didn't get saved. 
So, so uh, I'll just leave it there. The rest of the code uh, runs as written. Um, so from here on, what? Uh, 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 actually, I don't want this here. I want this. Uh, yeah. No. Should it build? Uh, I'm not gonna put in the whole uh, yeah, <laughs> comments again, but um, yeah, this is a way to uh, do your work. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that you should do your work in this class this way, but th this is a free tool that uh, I think uh, someone doing uh, upper division level coursework should consider it. So some something that can uh, help organize your work and possibly even uh, save some work. So, uh, 